Where did Jesus say in his words, his own words, not reported speech, direct? Wait, hold on, where did it say? Where did it say? Jesus, Jesus never wrote revelations. But is this is this revelation that he gave to John? It's the same way how Muhammad got revelations from the angels. Brother, you can also feel free to say something as well. It's the same thing, right? How Muhammad got revelations. We believe these apostles got revelations. This is Jesus speaking to them. Same way Muhammad got revelations. Same thing. Right. And you believe the Quran, Muhammad? In your hadith, Jesus was God as well. He says in the hadith. So Jesus is God. God. Wow. Where does it say that in the hadith that Jesus is God? Is there anywhere in the Bible that Jesus said, I am not God? Is there any, don't worship. He says yes. 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 I'll show you. The only true God is the Father. No, no, no. I said, where he, he says, says, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Where, 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 where he, he says, down down listen, where he says, I am not God, don't worship me. Can I answer? Show me. Can I answer? I just show me. Can I answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I Jesus in the Bible says, the only true God is the Father. So here it is, brother, yeah? You want to know where it says, Jesus is God in your Quran, right? I am not God, don't worship me. My brother, this is, it says Jesus is God in your Hadith. The Sahih Bukhari, which is the authentic scholarship of Hadith. It says, Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Said, by him in whose hands my soul is, son of Mary. And Allah uh, cannot have any partners, so we can see here. Read the Hadith, God. read it. So Allah's messenger said, by him. So Allah's messenger said, by him in whose hands my soul is, son of Mary. We shortly descend amongst the people, uh, Muslims, as a just ruler, and we break the cross and kill the pigs and the sons of Zizia. Tax taken from the non Muslims who are in the protection of Muslims. Okay? And then is. Um, Where did. Hello, so it's called Allah, his, uh, his soul oh, is brother, brother, his soul. Oh, brother, brother, listen, listen. His breath. And Jesus, read, just hear what I said, Allah. Just read. Yeah, but show me where. Read the hadith. I can't. This is what you're doing. You're throwing in your own understanding in the hadith. Jesus said the only two good father is Allah. By him in his hand, my soul is. Son of Mary, Jesus. Before he descend amongst you people, I am God. Worship him. As a just ruler, I will break the cross and kill the pig and the moral of Jesus. In the Bible, a tax taken from the non Muslims who are in the protection. He says the only two good father. Then there will be a bunch of yeah. money okay, and nobody will accept so didn't say I'm not God. let's understand this so if Jesus is known as a spirit did he say I'm not God don't worship me right let's understand what that means but did he say I am not God don't worship me he said that he said it anyway. he did is there huh? no, no, no. he did hold on is there anyone in the Bible I'll get to him I'll get to him I just want to know because he said where in the Bible did Jesus Christ say I am God worship me too many comments is there anywhere in the Bible that says I am God no we pray to Muhammad. Yes. Yes. So can you please tell me? That's a coma. Brother, 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 listen, listen, listen. I want to take you up on a verse that you mentioned earlier about John 8, 58. Right? Because you mentioned this, right? So what I want you to do, I want you to give me the Greek rendering of John 8, 58. Uh, I don't know Greek. Greek. No, no, no. I think that's like, isn't that like No, but do you know why this is important? Why is it important? Because you are accusing the messenger of God. You are, you're making a, a false accusation on Jesus that he's making a claim of divinity. Yes. And Jesus never, in any place of the New Testament, made a claim of divinity. Now you quote it. No, no, hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. Okay, so what? Let's go to Revelation 20. Okay, go there, go there. What did you say? Well, let's have a civilized discussion, brother. I don't want to. No problem, no problem. I'm not here to, to fight or anything like that. I'm having a discussion. So, according to um, Surah 57 the Quran Festival, it says Allah is the first and the last. Nothing is before him, nothing is after him, right? And then this is the one in Revelation 22 13, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, there's a. Yeah, in the book of Isaiah, in the Old Testament, God is saying um, to, the, to Isaiah, he says, I am the first and the, I am the last. And apart from me, there is no God. This okay. is why we can see that Jesus was God in the Bible. Okay. Right, so in the Quran, so you, you quoted the Quran, right? Well, the Quran says, what Allah says, that he is the beginning, right? So he is the beginning before anything existed, right? So are you saying to me that Jesus existed in the beginning with God. He was, he was always there, yeah, he was always there. Like, so, so that means there were two gods in the beginning, right? No, no, hold on one second. Let's, let's look at this logically. If you're saying that the Father eternally existed, right? And the Son also eternally existed. How can there be Father and Son? Because to have a Son... No, 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 hold on one second. Hold on. To have a Son, you must have a beginning. Yes or no? Do you have a Son? 
But yeah, in his human nature, he did have a beginning. But in, in his divine nature, he was always there. This is, right. This is right. Hold on one second. One second. One second. Right. Melchizedek. That's in Hebrew. Christ. No, hold on one second. In Melchizedek, in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. Right. It says, the king of Salem, without father, without mother, without beginning of days, no ending of life. Right? So Melchizedek had no beginning and he had no end. Is he God? No, yeah, we believe Melchizedek was Jesus. King, uh, king of Salem uh, means king of peace. So Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. That's what we believe. No, no, brother. You're not, you're not understanding what I'm saying to you. Melchizedek had no beginning. Yes. But that, yes, Melchizedek was Should we read it? coming down and revealing himself to Abraham. Hold on. Saying he did, Abraham. did Melchizedek have a father or a mother? But because Melchizedek is Jesus. Jesus never had a father. Right, right. Did Jesus a biological have, father and biological Did Jesus father. have a mother? Yes, in his human nature, yes. Right. He, he had a mother. We're talking about his divine in his divine no, nature. No, no, brother. First and last. Did Jesus in have his a mother? Nature, he did have a beginning, yes. No, 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 brother, you're not understanding my question. Okay. Did Jesus have a mother? In his human nature, yes. Did Mary. Melchizedek have a mother? No, no, because Melchizedek is Christ. So how can they Right, let's let's get like, the verse up. Christ is also revealed as the angel of the Lord. Because he can reveal himself when he was in his in his divinity in, in heaven, he could reveal himself on many times on earth in the old testament. Why don't we get the verse up and read it? It's in Hebrews chapter 7. Oh, you, you know, he's, this guy's been so desperate to be speaking to me, isn't he? I heard something about Melchizedek. What was the conversation about? But he's saying Jesus Christ. Let's get the verse up. What's the wider conversation about? I've got the verse where Jesus is God. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Which you have to agree with, because that's the description of it. And even in Christ, he's the first and the last. Yeah. Are you disagreeing with it? Right. No, 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 no. It's not about a disagreement. Listen, listen carefully to what I'm saying to you, right? What I'm saying to you, right, is that there is no unequivocal evidence, right? There is no unequivocal evidence from the lips of Jesus. Now, what I want from you, well, I'm going to express that, right? Right. So, let me just finish what I'm saying, right? Because I, because I know you've been, especially you, you've been chasing me for, for months to speak to me. But anyway, so, so, well, whatever. Right. Anyway, so, so, wait, hold on one second. What I want from you is something unambiguous, Okay. right? Unambiguous means something that is not open up to interpretation, right? Where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Okay, what if I can show you he says that he is God in his own words? Sorry? What if I show you where he says he is God in his own words? Where does he say that? John chapter 20, verse 28. What does say? So Thomas goes, says directly to Jesus, my Lord and my God, and Jesus says, blessed are those uh, who have seen and believed, and blessed are those who have not seen and yet. Let's, let's get it out. Another one is that Jesus says he's the Lord of the Sabbath, and Jesus says the Lord our God is one. Oh, there's tons of these, yeah, yeah. There's many verses. Even this, is, this is why, and like, to be honest with you, he's just going to say that the Gospel of John is corrupted. I said many that's, that's basically the only thing he can say. Well, have we spoken before? No. So why are you making this something what I'm going to say? Well, that's because it's been my experience every day. No, but why, 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 why are you making a doubtful? You don't, you're not sure. No, no. Hold on one second. Let me correct you here. Okay. Because okay, so we've never, second. we've never spoken. No, hold on. Okay. We've that's never fine. spoken before. Yeah, that's And you're, you're presupposing what I'm going to say. That's fair enough. Then you're not going to say it. That's, that's of course. Cool. Okay. So, 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 so let's look at it. Yeah. yeah. Even in the Quran, Jesus is known as the Spirit of Allah, and Allah has no attributes, and this Spirit of Allah was used, to create, was used to create life. Which is obviously a rip so that's shaking in itself. Yeah, yeah. Living a life of luxury, telling the people to rise up. I said, so many things, right? Hold on, John 20 what? John 20 chapter 20 verse Wait, wait, you mentioned John Yeah, John chapter 20 verse 28. 28, right. Thomas says, my Lord, my God. And they worshipped him and he never rejected it. But to Satan, he said, oh, you should only... we got more verses after To Satan, he said, you should only worship God. Show him Revelation 1 8. He rejected Satan. Show him Revelation 1 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone through that one. Oh, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, 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 he gave me okay, an example of Moses And I said, Moses Zedek. Show him Daniel 7 where the Son of Man... Um, Right, okay, so let's let's discuss this, right? It says, eight days later, let's start from 26, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Eight days later,
days later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Yeah, it's what the Muslims say. Assalamu alaikum. You copied us, right? Yeah, you copied us. You copied yeah. us. Right. You copied us. I said that in church. Do you, every you, yeah. do you say assalamu alaikum? Too late. No, we say peace be with you. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. okay. Well, we yeah, didn't copy you because yeah. Muslims you, say it generally you, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, let's get let's continue. Let's continue anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. then, then he said to Thomas. Yeah. Hold on, one second. Was Thomas doubting? Wait, wait. So hold on. Why would Thomas doubt God if he's God? Okay, this is just conjecture. No, 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 no. It's not conjecture. It's part of the argument. Don't, listen, you're you you're the one that pointed me to John 20. Now you're now now, now now you're arguing. No, no. Let me finish. Allow me to finish, and then we can continue, right? You brought me to John 20:28, 20, right? This is someone else saying, "My Lord and my God." What I ask, what I ask specifically. What I ask specifically, right, is that where did Jesus say I am God? Now, what you pointed to, now let me finish, because I want your response. I want your response. Or we can time this. Because what I don't want is that I'm going to say something and you're going to cut me off straight away. Otherwise, what's the point of the conversation? Yeah, no, I agree with time. Right, right. So, let's continue and then we'll, we'll give a commentary to it, right? Okay. Yep. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put them out, put them out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believe in. Funny enough, right, that Thomas is faithless and doubting he's God. He's doubt. No, wait, wait. Because the Jewish, the Jewish people. No, 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 no. Hold on one second. One second. One second. One second. Did, did. No, I'm not. I'm going to ask some questions. And I've got. No, no, no. no. Don't, don't try to control the conversation how it should go. I'm going to ask. No, but you pointed me. Calling you out. Right. You put. Did, did you point me to this verse? Yes or no? Yes. Are you actually right. reading it? Right. Yes no? I have. Do I have every right to question it? Yes or no? You have every right to read it. Read the verse no, I just gave you. I will read it. I will read it. But I've got every right to question it. Because I'm familiar yeah, with the Thomas verse. Was doubting because these Jewish people stole the body. So when right. Jesus, when he showed them the holes in his hand, Thomas knew that this was the prophecy that was. Did the disciples, did they did the disciples know that Jesus was gonna raise the third day? Yes or no? The disciples, yes, his was right. So why is Thomas faithless? That's what I'm saying, but it's not relevant to the question. No, it's very relevant. It's very relevant. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you right. I'll tell you what. The disciples made a news. Uh, not the disciples, the, um, the Jewish people. They made a news and then the disciples saw the body. So when Thomas um, Thomas saw this man come up to him, Thomas was doubting because he was reading Jesus. So when he saw the holes in his hand, he knew that was Jesus because their holes um, symbolized him and the cross. And they placed the nails to his cross. So they knew he knew. My friend, him. look, let's read it. I'll read it and then we'll just cross it. Oh, yeah? no, right, it said. Then he said to Thomas, yeah. put your finger here and see my hands yes. and put them out your hand and place it in my, in my side. Do not be faithless, but believe him. Thomas answered, in inverted commas, right? Sorry? In inverted commas, well, it says... What do you mean inverted commas? Right? What do you mean by that? Well, what does that mean? What, what, what do you think? What, is it, what, is what does inverted commas mean? To have inverted You're commas... You're saying it. No, hold on a second. Wow. Did I say that? That's what you're implying. Did, why did you say it? Why do you not ask me what I mean? You know that the commas aren't there. No, hold on one second, right? one second, hold on. No, why do you not ask me what I'm... Aren't there, the did did I say Thomas didn't say that? You just went in inverted commas. Right. Bro, what, what does that, that mean? What is that? Yeah, and that's Jesus, an English translation. Jesus, 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 J
right? Okay. Because John 17 Let's verse 3 yeah. identifies who as the only true God. See, that's an admission. No, wait, wait, hold on a minute. Wait, wait. No, no, that's answer my question. Answer my question. Answer my question. Who does Jesus identify? I am. Okay. Hold on a minute. One second. Do you believe? Wait, wait, hold on one second. Do you believe that the scriptures should harmonize each other yes, do. or do you so, believe okay. that they should conflict do you, do you accept then Jesus yes or no wait, wait, wait. And the lord your god is one right so Jesus, that right hold on a minute i'm speaking to three christians here right this is fun i'm speaking to three christians wait, wait, wait. with okay. three different questions so now let's okay, deal with this let's one, categorically one by one. Right? right one by one because okay, so do you acknowledge the verse i showed you is thomas calling jesus god and jesus acknowledging him no and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Even I just read it. I'll tell you why. The wife jumped to a different verse. Okay. So let me explain. Okay. Did I not say to you that the verses in the New Testament, should they conflict or should they harmonize? Right. Yes so or no? You do acknowledge. That's an admission that you acknowledge. Right. Another, Can you answer my you question? Say, that's you saying, okay. that's you saying, okay, it looks like this does. Another question. So let's go to another question. Wait, wait, hold on a minute. Jesus wait, wait, hold on a minute. Why do you wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Are you saying this wait, 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 hold on. No, 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 no. I'm asking you a question. Please answer my question. Okay. Three Christians here. You can answer the question. I'm asking you, should the verses in the New Testament Harmonize or conflict? The answer is yes. yes. And you have Thank you very much. To, to show that this verse doesn't matter. Right. Good. Call Jesus you need good. To, can you say so right. no, no, no. right. so why? Why what? didn't these people reject Jesus again worship? Yes. Why didn't Jesus reject Jesus again worship him? What's the contradiction in that one? Okay, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Which he now acknowledges. Which one says one says Jesus is God, right? The other one says Jesus is not God. Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. Listen, oh, so no listen no allow me to finish and then you'll understand what I'm trying to get at. But you need right? to, why, did, why didn't Jesus reject these people worshipping him? And okay. he said it's to Satan, worship your Lord, your God only. Okay. And Can Jesus calls him to the Lord of No problem, no problem. Let's deal with the verse. Let's deal with the verse, right? In Daniel chapter 2, in Daniel oh, chapter 2, verse 46, Daniel received worship and did not object. Does that make him God? Nebuchadnezzar Bro, fell on his face. No, 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 hold on one second. You can... As you will, as you will, as you will, as you will. No, you, he said, he said just now that Jesus accepted worship and he didn't object, right? And because Moses, because Thomas called him, because Thomas... Jesus calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath, what does that mean? Listen, my friend, listen, my friend. I said to you in the beginning of this conversation, right? I said to you in the beginning of this conversation that... The verses in the Bible must by default harmonize. And we believe if they, they do. no, but I don't, be, I don't believe you believe now, that. You think that this you do not believe that. Jesus is God. You do not believe that. And I'll tell you why you don't believe that. Worship. Tell me why right? I myself worship God. believe in my own mind. So nobody worshipped Daniel. They just fell in front of him and they bowed, they praised God. Okay, should I show you the verse? They never worshipped him. Oh, so it didn't say, what does it say? It says just a king, never each other, fell prostrate for Daniel. didn't say he worshipped him, but Thomas and these they were worshipping Jesus. Oh, so check. Oh, what, sorry, what version are you reading there? Because different versions say different things. No, 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 no. You're, what are you reading? The RSV? The new English. Wait, right, the new English one. On one. No, point. no, no, you hold on. I'm going to show you my version. No, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you because this is just mind semantics. Right, so let's go to Daniel. You will see why I am. I'm going to get back to John 20, 28. Trust me, I'm not running do you away from. You pray to Muhammad as well? Wait, hold on. No, no, you're changing the subject now. No, no. You're changing the subject. Not let me go about the you do pray to Muhammad. Go ahead. Listen, let me you just. Talk about let's, let's, let's talk about. What you discussed. I haven't discussed, I haven't changed John? anything. You brought John 2028. 20, I asked you, where does the evidence? Okay, you brought John. Okay, All right, anyway. Let's, let's, go, to let's go to John. Right, let's go to. Hold on, bear with me. But yeah, you do acknowledge now that John chapter 20, verse 28 does call Jesus God. The main thing is Jesus calls himself the Lord. That's the main thing. Daniel never calls himself the Lord of a thing, does he? Let's Jesus let's calls himself the Lord. The contradiction between John chapter yeah. 17 and John chapter and 20, verse 28. Yeah. What's the contradiction? And John 17, verse 3. Jesus doesn't exclude his deity, does he? he let's just, go to John 17, verse 3. That's going to be fun. Father, that's it. See, so this kind of low level die script won't work when you study. And this is the problem. It's the because question is, Jesus called himself Lord. That's the main thing. And if, when these people are worshiping him, call him my Lord. They say to him, my Lord, my, my Lord, my God. And he accepts it. That's a big thing, isn't it? Well, I, don't know why it's I don't know. Just arbitrary. Right. It says here. Right. Let me read it for you, right? Let me read it for you. It says here that Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped 
Daniel. Worship Daniel. So now I'm going to ask you this now, because remember, your argument was. No, 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 no. No, hold on, one second, one second. The principle of your argument is as follows. You said. Because Jesus accepted worship, he didn't object. Because he said, you right? But Jesus ordered God. Lord. No, no, no. Li listen. Jesus, Jesus said to Satan, and he said, you should only worship my Lord, uh, the Lord Hamza, of God. He said, my and right. Jesus called himself the Lord of the Suburbs. Yeah. Right. So, he so, so because someone is called Lord, because someone is called. Wait, hold on. Because someone is called. Right. So, just because someone calls himself Lord, is that your argument that they're God? My God. Jesus was the one who said to Satan, you should worship your Lord of God. And then, if Jesus if Jesus is not God, you should. Why is he calling him so Thomas said, my Lord, my God. God. And Jesus said, my Lord, my God is one. That's, That's what Jesus said. said. Right. The Lord, my okay. God is one. Let's deal with this. Let's deal with this. I'm going to go back to the argument. I'm going to drag you straight back to what we've been discussing. I'm you, waiting for you. Bro. Right. You missed out so, on the point. Thing. I haven't... Well, if you just allow me to finish, maybe it will work I'm out. I'm still waiting for you. Right, good. Wait, then what you... Then, well, okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't we time this? Sure. Okay. Why don't we time this? Yeah, yeah. Someone's got a stop clock. A stop and then clock. no one interrupts. Yeah. So yeah. I'll give you, what, two minutes? Two minutes each? Is that what we're going to do? Two minutes each. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Actually, you can time it. Chop two more time. Let's time this, right? The main point is Jesus always wants the Lord. Daniel never says that he is the Lord. Two minutes, right? Two minutes each. You you present your argument, and I present mine. Are you going to go put your it. case first? So you want me to make no, no. Argument? Put your case first, both of you or three of you, and then I respond. No, I've already said the contradiction is what I want to. Do. No, no. Put your argument forward, and then I'll respond. Two minutes. Right. Go ahead. It's a bit unusual that you want me to go first, but right. Go ahead. Okay. Pleasure. So my argument is pretty basic. Yeah. Jesus is clearly called God at the very minimum in the New Testament, in multiple places, in His own words. For example, in John chapter twenty, verse twenty-eight. Jesus clearly responds to Thomas, who is saying to him, and the interlinear is clear, my Lord and my God. Kurios Theos, Lord and God. Jesus then says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. In other words, confirming what Thomas has just said. So there's a direct answer to the very question he started off with, asking where Jesus calls himself God. Answered. Now, the other argument you brought up is the fact that the in, in Revelation, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, 22, 13 as well, clearly it says, in Jesus' own words, he is the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. That is a divine title, a divine attribute that Allah himself takes for himself. As a Muslim, you have to accept, according to our scriptures, Jesus is claiming to be God. Now, let's go back to John. In John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, Jesus clearly tells the disciples that when he ascends into heaven, they can pray to him and he will answer their prayers in his name. That means that Jesus has the power to answer people's prayers under the divine attribute. Can anyone other than Allah answer people's prayers? According to you, no. Therefore, you have to accept on this account as well that Jesus answering prayers means he is God in the Muslim perspective. Also, obviously, in our perspective. So that's another point. Another verse, John chapter 16, verse 30. Jesus says that he knows all things and that he is not speaking metaphorically. He is speaking literally, plainly. Therefore, we know that Jesus is omniscient. Therefore, if Jesus is omniscient, that is an attribute of God. So Therefore, what verse Jesus is, that? Sorry, is God. What verse is that? 16 verse 30. 16 verse 30. Cool. Another one was on, uh, Jesus said, the, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And then Jesus. So, and then I think from this alone, this demonstrates con absolutely conclusively, along with the early church fathers, that Jesus is indeed God. It's not even a question. So the fact that you keep bringing this up basically demonstrates you're not reading. Yeah, you, that Jesus, is my point. Jesus, All right, two minutes up. All right. Okay. Right, ready? Yeah. Right, so he mentioned that Jesus said in John 16, verse 30, that Jesus knows all things, right? But, is that, am I right? Am I, I, yeah, right, okay. But when Jesus was asked about the Day of Judgment, his response was what? No one knows the hour except God alone, right? So, John 16, verse 30, clearly contradicts the verse that I've just, that I've just said, I've read to you, right? Jesus says, that day or that hour knows no man. Nay, not even the Son, not even the angels in heaven, but the Father alone. So now what I want you to do, explain to me, right, that how is it possible that Jesus did not know the hour, but John 16 is saying that somehow he recognizes and knows all things. Clearly that's a, a serious conflict in the Bible. Now, if you're going to argue, oh, well, well, that's his human side, right? His divinity side knew, but his human side didn't. 
then you still begs the question that Jesus says, no one knows the hour except the Father alone. So whatever way you look at it from his divinity or his humanity, Jesus lacked that knowledge. So that means Jesus did not know the hour. And if he doesn't know the hour, he doesn't know all things. So what I want you to do, I want you to come back and response to me and explain to me why Jesus did not know that crucial question. That's number one. Number two, right? The Bible says, oh, how long is that? Right, okay. Right, so back to John, John 20, 28, right? It's Jesus said, uh, Thomas said, my Lord and my God, right? In John 17, verse 3, Jesus identifies the Father as the only true God. So therefore, that verse conflicts with one another. So therefore, when Thomas said, my Lord and my God, if you notice, it had inverted commas. It could also mean a, as an outburst of surprise. Like, for example, if I haven't seen someone in a long time, I said, oh my God, does it mean that I'm acknowledging you as God? No, of course not. It doesn't mean that at all. So is my time up? No, no, I want to explain. Yeah, okay. So if I say, you know, wow, I haven't seen you in a long time, and I said, my God, it doesn't mean that I'm acknowledging you as God. It's, a, it's an outburst of surprise. That's, that is the understanding of it. If you don't take the understanding... Uh, wait, wait, oh, hold on, hold on, it's my time. Oh, okay, sorry, go on. Go on, sorry. Wait, we let you have a little longer than that. But anyway, stop for two timers. Okay, Make so sure you stop me on the time. Right. We're being polite. Right, so right. first of all, I mentioned two things. He couldn't address either of them. He had to pivot to other examples. That is an omission, he has no answer. Also, keep in mind that the verses that he went to, he's trying to form a contradiction. Surah and Nisa, Ayah 82, says that if the Quran was not from God, there would not be multiple contradictions. In other words, the Quran is fine with there being a few contradictions. So even that's not a problem for me, on your belief. But on my belief, I'm going to take this seriously and address this. So Mark chapter 13, verse 32, and Matthew 24, verse 36, which is what the verses you were quoting, we talked about Jesus supposedly not knowing the hour. Now, we know that he did know the hour. Very simply, because of the verse I gave you that says Jesus knows all things. What Jesus does not know in his humanity, which is otherwise well, uh, attested in the Gospel of Luke, for example. In the Gospel of Luke, it says that Jesus grew in wisdom. There is no issue with us affirming the fullness of the humanity of Jesus. He was indeed a child. He did indeed grow up. He did indeed learn things in his humanity. The Gospel affirms this, particularly in the Gospel of Luke. Now, when it comes to Mark 13:32. We know very clearly that the doctrine, as you have said, is that Christ has two natures. It's human nature, it's humanity, and it's divinity. Now, we know that in his humanity, he did not know all things, but in his divinity, he did know all things. So for us, the word in Greek that means to know, we understand that in the sense that he knows in his divinity, not knows in his humanity. That's not an issue for us, that's basic doctrine that the church has always believed in. Now, now he went to John chapter 20 verse 28, and he gave this really weird thing about how, oh, he was just so surprised. So he just blasphemes right to Jesus. He just blasphemed, he just blasphemed. No, that is an absolute crazy interpretation. And you only find this from Dawagandis. You will never find this from, for example, Bart Ehrman. You won't find this from Daniel Wallace. You won't find this from Bruce Metzger. You won't find this from any of scholar who takes that interpretation because it's not there in the Greek. The Greek is very clear. Thomas said to him, Jesus, my Lord and my God, Curios Theos. Therefore, you have not addressed my issues at all. Yeah, okay, hold on. The main issue we have is that Jesus calling himself the Lord of the Sabbath. And Jesus himself says to Satan, you should worship the Lord your God only. So why is Jesus calling himself the Lord? Right, sorry, Matt, you finish. Right, okay. Let's go to Matthew 24, 36, right? Now, he came out of this elaborate, nonsensical interpretation that, oh, well, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature. Hold on, you're supposed to be God. God doesn't grow in wisdom and in stature. God doesn't grow in knowledge. God is the all knowledgeable God, full stop. Now, if you're arguing, well, hold on a minute, but in his humanity, he didn't know, but in his divinity, he knew. Let's go to the verse. Let's go to the verse. It says here, but of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my father only. O-N-L-Y, only. So regardless, whatever interpretation you come out with, whether, you know, well, oh, in his humanity he didn't know, but in his divinity he knew. Well, clearly in his divinity he did not know, because it says that only the Father knows this. So it's still a contradiction. No matter what interpretation you come out with, it's a contradiction in terms. Jesus said only the Father knows. Now, going back to my second point, right? 
he's coming up with, oh, no, well, um, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Okay, let me ask you a question. In John chapter 10, when the Jews accused Jesus of being God, right? When the Jews accused Jesus of being God, he said, you are a mere man that's claiming to be God. Did Jesus acknowledge? Did Jesus affirm? That would have been the, that would have been the perfect opportunity for Jesus to say, yes, I'm God. Yeah, of course I'm God. But did Jesus say yes? Did he make an affirmation of divinity? No. Go to John chapter 10, verse 30, where Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Read the argument for yourself. And then that would have been a perfect opportunity for Jesus to spin his divinity. But he did not say yes. In fact, he denied. He says, I am Ben Elion. That's what he said. I am Ben Elion. Right? Time? Time. Okay. All right. So keep in mind at the beginning, I said that in your own Quran, it says it has no issues with multiple contradictions. So even from your own Quran, this is actually not an issue. But I don't even I believe this is a contradiction. I think this is simple. You said, oh, the verse itself says the Father alone. Well, that depends on what it means by no, right? Like, for example, we're saying that Jesus, there is a sense he knows in his divinity, in a sense he doesn't know in his humanity. So in that sense, if he's not consciously aware of something, then only the Father is consciously aware. But you can still know things and not be consciously aware of them. It's called your subconscious. So that's a perfectly viable way that you can understand that text. Now, let's go to John 20, 28. John 20, 28, he basically went, oh, I don't know. You basically can see that to me. So at least that's one verse where Jesus says he's God. Now you went all the way to John chapter 10, which is going to bury you. Yeah. Let's, let's do this. So first of all, Jesus says that he gives eternal life. No one takes anyone out of his hands. He equates that with the Father. So Jesus just equated in, in verse 27 himself with the Father, both giving eternal life. Who can give eternal life? It's a lie, isn't it? Jesus said he's God. Right, and then you said, oh, but he never, he, he never made it absolutely clear. Well, they actually push against him because they understood he was saying he was God. How do we know this? We can actually read the verse and it tells us the opinion of the Jews. So, here we go. Let's actually read what was specifically said. And his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. Yeah. We are not stoning you for any good work, but for blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. So they understood he was claiming to be God. I know he was claiming to be God. Somehow you've missed the point. Now, let's read the very final thing. This is what Jesus ends with. He says, but if I do these things, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. And again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. In other words, they still believed he was claiming to be God at the end of this conversation. So yes, he did affirm, yes, I am claiming to be God, which is why they tried to get him again, and he had to escape from them. I know where he's going to go for that. But the problem is, is he hasn't bothered to read the whole passage, so he's uh, he's just dug a hole for himself. Time? There you go, Hamza. Deal yeah. with that. Time. Right. Notice he didn't answer my. He didn't even respond to the point I made. What he's done? He's gone to the accusation of the Jews. Yeah, of course. I'm not denying that. Yes, it does say that. Yes, you are. You are claiming to be God. This is what the accusation was. You're believing the hostile people that were hostile towards him. Is that your best source of evidence? Is that your best source of evidence? Where the host people that were hostile towards Jesus, which is your Lord and Savior, you're taking their affirmation of words over what Jesus' response was? I said to him, I read his response. Notice he didn't read what Jesus' response was. I said what Jesus' response was. Jesus says, I call myself Ben Elion. I'm calling myself less than that. I'm calling myself the son of God, Ben Elion in Hebrew. Right? Now he said, oh well, Jesus said, well, you know, Jesus gives eternal life, etc. Only the Father can give eternal life. Right. So the Bible says, all power was given to me from who? The Father. So before Jesus was the recipient of that power, did he have the power in the beginning? No, he didn't. He did not have power. Full stop. So if Jesus was able to give eternal life, that doesn't mean that he's God. God gave him the ability to give eternal life. I have no issues with that. God is the one that's given him that, in, given him that power. Before Jesus had the power, did he have the authority? No, he didn't. John chapter 5 verse 30 it says, I can of myself do nothing. Can you imagine God is saying that? I can't do nothing of myself. I judge as I hear, but my judgment is honest because I'm not seeking my will, but I'm seeking the one who sent me. Can you imagine God is telling you that, hey, I can't do nothing of myself. 
it's nonsensical. And he still hasn't answered my third point, which is in John 17, 3, which you still can't get out of. Time, time, sorry, go ahead, time. All right, <clears throat> to be really quick, this is kind of funny. He is jumping all over the place. He's jumping all over the place because every time I refute something, he can't deal with it, so he just goes to a different point. But this is funny, he's totally misunderstood what I said. You quoted John chapter 10, and you were going down, but you never read the last bit, which is where Jesus affirms what he was saying previously. You haven't finished the reading. The very last thing he says is, but if, you, if I do them, these works, though you may not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father, and then they go to seize him again. So he affirms it. You haven't addressed that because you can't address it. You jumped. Right, then you went to 5.30. How is it that Jesus um, cannot act on his own will? He has to do what the Father says. Easy, because we're Trinitarians. We believe that God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They do not act in, in separately of each other. Thank you for pointing to that beautiful Trinitarian verse. Thank you very much. Then he went to another one. He went to John 17.3, which is hilarious. Right, so his whole point is, he quotes the, the verse and he says, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. The only true God is being applied to who? It's been applied to the Father. So who is the only true God? The Father. Right, we're Trinitarians. So who is the only true God? The Son. Who is the only true God? The Holy Spirit. Thank you. It would be an issue for us if it said the Father alone is the only true God, but that's not what the text says. It, does, it doesn't say the Father alone is. It really says that there is only one true God. And it assigns it to the Father, which is like, yes, just like it could be assigned to the Son, just like it could be assigned to the Holy Spirit. So again, thank you for that beautiful Trinitarian verse, which again is talking about how Jesus gives eternal life, which is shirk according to you. So you even know this is shirk, you know this is calling Jesus God. You've read the verse, because you quoted it, but you're just pretending you, have, you don't know. You quote chapter 5, chapter 5 verse 23, says that the way that you honour the Son is the same way you honour the Father. How do you honour the Father? Through worship. Jesus said that he is God because you should worship him the same way you honour the Father. Thank you for pointing to another Trinitarian verse. John 1.1, 1, 1, where he says that he in the beginning was the Word, and everything that was created was created through the Word, and then that Word incarnate was made incarnate, right? Therefore Jesus did have all power from the beginning, so that's refuted as well. you will go. Yep. Right. Do you see how Chris has to torture the text of the scripture? He has to literally torture the text. In John 17 verse 3, does it say that this is life eternal? This is the intercessory prayer for those who don't know, right? When Jesus was around his disciples, Jesus says, and this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God. Did Jesus say the only true God is the Father? The only true God is the Son? The only true God is the, is the Holy Spirit? Did Jesus say that? Show me where he said that. I challenge you, right? Show me in the Bible where Jesus says, the only true God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No way does it say that. But I want him to produce that for me, please. Right? Then he goes to John 1.1, 1, 1, right? And we're going to go back to John chapter 10. He says, in the beginning was the Word, right? And the Word was with God. Hold on a minute. How many gods were there in the beginning? Right? In the beginning was the Word, which is who? Who's the Word? Ke Logos. This is the word that's used. And the word was with God. So that means there's two gods in the beginning. And the word was God. Which, in fact, the last part of the verse lacks the definite article, right? Which is Tom Theos, I believe, right? So the point I'm trying to say here, in the beginning was two gods. That makes you a polytheist. You're doing shirk. Explain that to me. Now, in John chapter 10, verse 30, right, Jesus said what? I and my Father are one. In John chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus says, my Father is greater than all. Does that exclude Jesus or include Jesus? I would like a response for that. John chapter 14, verse 28, Jesus says, my Father is greater than I. But yet Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. So we have two verses that conflict. Explain that to me, please. Or you can harmonize it, right? Time. Right. All right, so again, more just trying to appeal to random contradictions. He says the John 1 1 must imply there are two gods. No, it doesn't. We don't believe these gods are separate. We believe that there is only one God and that the Word is God, as well as the Father, as well as the Holy Spirit. So there's only one God. They are not separable. Second of all, you then quoted. What was it you quoted? Oh, you went to the whole Father is greater than I thing. Yeah, the Father is greater in role, not in essence. And hence, in essence, you get John chapter 10, verse 30. They are one, in essence. But you get John chapter 14, verse 28, I believe. 
Um, and you also quote another verse as well where Jesus says that the Father is greater than all. Well, yeah, in role, he is. Why? Because the Father never incarnate. The Father never, never humbled himself coming to earth, but the Son did. So the Son in role is in submission to the Father because they have different roles. Therefore, the Father is greater in role, but not in essence. So there we go. That's easy to harmonize. You can keep doing this until the end of the time, but the point is, it's just, yeah, it's just like terrible, terrible answers. Now, no, wait, 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 wait. Hey, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Now, let's go back to your point because you said there is. You, I need to show you explicitly where Jesus said Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Trinity. That is his criteria for establishing a doctrine. Okay, in Islam, show me a single verse where it says that Muhammad was sinless. Show me the doctrine of Isma in explicit verses in the Quran or the Hadith. He will never be able to do that because he's not consistent. He has one rule for Christianity, one rule for Islam, and he will never be consistent on that. That is my challenge to him, having addressed his points in my time. 30 seconds. All right, we're going to do for 30 seconds. Okay, so there are other doctrines as well in Islam that aren't explicitly mentioned. For example, you would say that Jibreel is the Holy Spirit. Again, you won't find that explicitly mentioned in the Quran. You infer it instead. There's other doctrines as well that you infer because you can't explicitly find uh, verses in them. And I think that's just showing you that your faith is in error. You have a standard that you cannot apply consistently to your own religion. Why not be consistent in your religion? Instead, you have to come up with explicit word fallacies that you won't apply to yourself. Time? Yeah. Right, okay. So let's go back to John 1.1 1, 1, because it seems to me that he was not really explaining it correctly, right? Or it was a very short fall explanation, right? So let's go to the Greek itself, right? It says, In ak in logos, ke logos on prostontheon, right? In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. Ke logos en prostontheon. And the word was with God. The word was with God. So who was with the word? If I said, I am with Chris, that means there's two separate people that's been spoken about here. I can't be you and you can't be me. So when it says, in ach in her logos, ke logos on prostontheon, it says that the word was with God, so that means there were two gods in the beginning. You are a polytheist. Explain to me, explain to me how this is talking about a singularity of the oneness of God when it says ke logos on prostontheon, that the word was with God, and then the word was God, which lacks the definite article. Please explain that to me. Because John 1.1 1, 1 does not describe a unity of God. It describes a duality. In fact, you wouldn't even find the Trinity in this verse. It talks about two separate gods. Anyway, going back to John chapter 10, right? Jesus says, and he still hasn't quoted the verse. Jesus says, I am Ben Elyon. I say that I am the son of God. Because we know that in Psalm chapter 82, that the Jews are called gods. So this is something that's known. Jesus did not say, yes, I am God. Jesus did not make an affirmation. Please explain to me, if Jesus is God in John chapter 10, when they accused this of him, why did not Jesus make the affirmation? Why did he not say, yes, I am God? And if you believe, time, okay, sorry. Go on. Yeah. Okay, just to address that real quick. So he does, that's my whole point. The very last thing he says is affirming what he's previously said. And then they try to grab him again to kill him. Because he's asserting, yes, I am God. I'm not backing down from that. He's asserting that he is. You still haven't read the last verse in which he speaks in that chapter. So again, he doubled down on it. Now, he's going to say, oh, but he never explicitly said, I am God. He has to say it in those words. Show me where it says Muhammad is sinless in the Quran. You can't because it isn't there. In fact, the Quran says he's a sinner repeatedly. It says in Surah 48, 48 Ayah 2, that his past, future and present sins will be forgiven. Yet you believe in the doctrine of Isma. Hypocritical. Then you went to John 1 and you totally missed out verse 3. <laughs> in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. There is no separation. We don't make a separation and that's what Trinitarianism is. Now, the Word in verse 14 became incarnate as Jesus. There is no separation in God. The Son, the Father, and the Spirit are not separate entities. They are distinct hypostases in one homoousia, one essence. 
But of course, you, you don't know this. You probably have never read Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, where it says that Jesus created all things. Probably never read that. You probably never read Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, where explicitly it says that God himself came down. He, he came down in the form of Christ. You probably never read that. There are tons of verses in the Bible that say that Jesus is God. I think you've lost this debate from the beginning. All you've been able to do is jump to the passages and try and find contradictions. But by trying to find those contradictions, you bury Islam because the same criteria you apply for those contradictions, you don't apply to your own religion. And that's hypocritical. But make sure that you apply it to your own religion before you bring it against me. Otherwise, I'm just going to point out you're a hypocrite. I'll see my time. Finish? Right. Notice that I pointed to the Greek language, right? Chris is arguing there's no separation. Yes, there is separation. I pointed it out in the Greek language. I pointed it out in the translation. So Chris is in denial. Let's go back to the verse itself, right? It says, in ach in helogos, in the beginning was the word. Ke logos on prostontheon. And the word was with God. The word was with God. I will. This is my time. Thank you very much. Respect my time, thank you, right? Ke logos on prostantheon. And the word was with God. So yes, in the beginning, there was a separation. Am I not reading English or am I reading something different? I read it in the English and I read it in the Greek. Ke logos on prostantheon. The word was with God, yes, and in the end it says, and the word became God, right? Or the word was God, Never. right? However, in different translations, right? It says, and the word was a God, in the Jehovah Witness translation. Why? Because if we go to the end of the verse, which is tontheos, tontheos in Greek has a multiplicity of different interpretations and understanding. Right? I will point out another translation where it doesn't even say, and the word was God. It's, in some other translations, it says, and the word was a God. And if we go to Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, Moses is called a God. And it uses the same Greek word, ton theos. If you go back to the Greek, it uses the word ton theos. So Moses is called a God. But how comes, if we go to the Greek Septuagint, how comes Moses is called a God in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, but then in John 1.1, 1, 1, it uses the term, and the word was God, even though the same Greek word is used here. So maybe I would like you to explain why this is not the case. Number two, am I, am I out of time? Am I finished? Oh, sorry, go on. Okay, um, oh, sorry, it's going to change the, change the battery. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you, thank you. Sister. <coughs> okay, shall we start again? Listen, Let's start again. Yeah. Alright, so I'm at two minutes. Okay, so we keep saying that John 1 1 teaches some kind of separation, the two gods. Well, I finally managed to get him to repeat verse 3, finally, because he didn't want to say that, but he eventually said verse 3, which is that they are the same. The word is God. So there is no separation. First of all, you've been talking about the very verse, John chapter 10, verse 30, where Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Again, there's no separation. So you're helping me make my point. Now he says, ah, but there's, there's different translations where they translate it differently. They say a God. Yeah, heretical, heretical sex, like Jehovah's Witnesses, like you mentioned. Sure. But of course, I don't affirm that. Neither does anyone else. I challenge you to go through all the different translations and tell me how many of them translate it as a God and how many translate it as God. You'll be in for a very big shock, my friend. Now, this demonstrates that he has no argument about whether Jesus was considered God. All he can do is try and find contradictions and he struggles with that. But he's already admitted that according to the New Testament, at the very least, Jesus is called God. The JavaScript needs an update. JavaScript needs an update. Now, remember, he kept pulling out these explicit verse fallacies. There needs to be all these explicit verses for us to affirm that Jesus is God, otherwise he doesn't count. Again, in Islam, you also have the same problem. You believe certain things, but you don't have explicit verses. Like, for example, the doctrine of Ismail, the idea that the prophets are sinless. It never says that in the Quran or the Hadith. It actually says in Surah 48, Ayah 2, that Muhammad is a sinner, because he will have his past, future, and present sins forgiven. So, 
that doctrine doesn't exist in your scripture, but you believe it anyway. Oh, problem. Now, I'm going to throw this one in for fun. So, in Matthew 28, uh, verse 19, a, a in Matthew 28, so verse 19, please 19, don't come out with all these sounds, please. Matthew 28, verse 19, Jesus says to go out and baptize in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, singular in the Greek for name. That means that there is a baptismal formula, but it's Trinitarian in Matthew 28, verse 19. Brilliant stuff. Now, would we say that baptizing in the name of someone is a divine, divine command? Yes, it would seem likely, given that that's the history of what baptism is. People do baptism in the name of Yahweh, or in Hashem. Sorry, did you so, mention Matthew 28? 28, 19. What was it? The baptismal form. Okay, Jesus sorry, yeah. Baptized in the name of Christ. Oh, my turn. Right, okay. Right. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the language of the Greek, okay? Because it seems to me that he hasn't really addressed the point I've raised. And it, it seems that we're going in a circle and we're going in America round. And that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to um, join the ride with you. Now, I've pointed out in the Greek language, right, that, you know, Chris doesn't believe in separation. I quoted the Greek, and I repeat it again. It says, En ach in helokos, ke logos om proston theon. Right? The Word was with God, and the Word was God. I pointed out that the word ton theos in Greek means a God in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. I pointed out, if we look at the Greek lexical meaning of the word ton theos in Greek, if you go to the Septuagint Greek of the Old Testament, the word ton theos is used here when it comes to Moses called, um, Moses called um, a God in Exodus 7 verse 1. So we do see a difference in translation. We do. Clearly. That's number one. Number two, he pointed to Matthew 28 verse 19. According to the Grolier Encyclopedia, the Grolier Encyclopedia says that Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 is in addition, is in addition to the scriptures. Just like the first epistle of John chapter 5 verse 7 and 8, where it said that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. I'm sure that Chris will agree with me that that's an interpolated verse. So I would like, I would like Chris to admit that the first epistle of John chapter 5 verse 7 8 is an interpolated verse. I would like you to agree with me or disagree with me when you come back on your rebuttal. Last point I would like to make in, in John chapter 10 verse 30. Clearly, we see that Chris has completely misread the whole verse. <coughs> and what we will do, I think in my second round, I will go back to that because I think I'm tired. Go ahead. All right, so you, again, you're insistent that John 1 1 should be translated a God, not God. The vast majority of translators translate it the way I say it is, not the way you say it is. In fact, the people that translate it the way you say it is are usually heretical with Jehovah's Witnesses who have an agenda because they already start off with this as a belief that they want to enforce through scripture. They change their scripture, by the way. So they actually change uh, 1 Colossians verse 15. We didn't know that. You should check that out. But anyway, you then went. Uh, what was the next yeah, one? You mentioned Tom Theon, and Tom Theon is definitely the last one. Right, right. Uh, what was the next one? Um, Matthew, 28 Matthew, uh, Matthew, Matthew 28, 19. Yeah, uh, scholarship is in consensus that is actually a legitimate part of the Bible. You, it's up to you to show me it isn't. Yeah, that some um, psychopath has no authority. I know for a fact that modern scholarship, N.T. Wright, Daniel Wallace, Bart Ehrman, will all say yes, the earliest manuscripts do seem to imply that that is a legitimate version of Matthew. So that's a bogus argument. You're appealing to fringe scholarship, and I challenge you to prove otherwise. Now, now you went to chapter, oh, you're not, you're going to go to chapter uh, John 10 again. All right, fine, you can do that. Again, this is all failing. Remember, the whole point of this was for you to try and tell me that Jesus isn't called John, uh, Jesus isn't called God <laughs> in the New Testament. But you haven't even done that. You've, you've, you've now jumped to being like, well, he's not called the word. Oh, it's contradictory. You've gone to all your backup arguments because your first point has failed. You have to concede now with John chapter 20, verse 28, that Jesus is called God in the New Testament, which is beautiful. Amen. And I'm happy, and I'm happy to, to go on that. I'm going to give my time as well. Let's, I want to hear his John 10 thing. That'll be fun. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go back to what I said to you before. I quoted the Greek language, right? I excuse me. Excuse me. It's my time. So stop. Right. Right. I pointed in a Greek language, right? I even read out to you the Greek language itself, where it doesn't speak about a unity. It speaks of a separation. Ke logos om prostontheon, and the word was with God. 
clearly shows that another entity is with another entity. So you have to demonstrate to me why are we not showing the unity of God in John 1 1 is showing that there are two gods in the beginning. That's number one. Please answer that. You have not responded to me on that point. That's number one. Number two, he pointed to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, right? Now, did all the disciples baptize using this formula, right? I believe Peter only baptized in the name of Jesus alone. Explain to me why some of the disciples baptized in the name of Jesus alone, but are not in this threefold formula. Please explain to me why. It, did they disobey Jesus when Jesus said that they should baptize in this formula? And notice it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Does it say that these three are one? No, it doesn't. Please explain to me why it doesn't show in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, where it says that these three are one. Right? Please, excuse me, either go over there or please be quiet. Be quiet. Right. Right. So now we're having a debate here. So can you start my time again? Every time I'm going to be, every time I'm going to be discussed. Right? Every time I'm going to be disturbed, I'm going to start my time again. So keep coming in. You, thank you. Thank you. You're helping me. Thank you. Thank you. So. But if you're going to pray the Excuse me. Start, start my time again. Start time again. Start my time again. Start again. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yes. I think yours is right now. Right. Anyway. Right. So I'm going to start my time again. I'm sorry. Every time. Listen. When he's talking, I don't. I, I'm silent. Mate, we gave you extra time. And a courtesy. I'm, listen, as long as I'm interrupted, I'm starting my time again. Sorry. Give me two minutes. want to start to again. Give me a minute. A minute. Any interruption, I'm getting a minute. getting buried anyway. A minute. Start now. A minute. Start now. Right. Now, I pointed to Matthew, John chapter 10, verse 30, right? Jesus said. I and my father are one. John chapter 14, verse 28, Jesus said, my father is greater than I, right? Also, I don't, I'm not sure why Chris hasn't responded to what Jesus' actual response was. He says, I am Ben Elion. I am the son of God. Jesus says, I am lesser than what you are claiming me to be. Why has not Chris responded to that. I've asked that question about three or four times earlier and you did not respond to that. So please respond to that. You can go ahead. Okay, John 1 1. We can look in the Greek quite clearly. It says that God was the Word. There is no A there. I mean, God was the Word. There's no separation. You're the one who's trying to make separation by picking heretical translations which go against the vast majority of scholarship. Like, I've read into this. No major scholar believes this. It's only heretical stuff that do. Right, so then you jump to Matthew 28, 19. And you were saying, oh, how do you know it's one? How do you know they're all one? Well, yeah, because it uses the Greek name, not names up. It's singular. The singular name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You didn't address my point, which is that this is uh, accepted by modern scholarship as being in the earliest manuscripts and therefore a valid part of the Gospel of Matthew. You didn't address that because you don't have a clue about it. Next, then you went to uh, John chapter 10 and you were like, look, it says Son of God and Son of God is lesser. No, it doesn't. That's just in your head. The very last part, after John 10.30, uh, 10 near the end, the last words that he says, he affirms that yes, I am what I say I am. Believe me, because not because of what I say, but because of the works that I do, that I and the Father are one. The Jews then go to stone him again, after they tried before. So it isn't the case that he is rejecting it. He's affirming it by saying, hey, you know, you know about Psalm 82? You know about how these people were called gods? How much more so is it appropriate to call the Son of God, the one who is very begotten, unique, who does these things, these proofs that are around you? There you go. And again, he's never really read and it. Ben so really does not mean son anyway, of God anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so yeah, you've been busted on these three points. I don't think you really have an answer for any of this. You don't you've appealed to free scholarship. You, John one 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 is translated the way I say it in pretty much every translation. There's only a few heretical ones that translate it your way. John twenty eight nineteen, the word name is singular, not plural, so singular name about this. Oh, and you said, wait, but wasn't that cheese oh, they didn't do it correctly, the disciples, right? The Didache, which is one of the earliest extra biblical documents that we have about how the church was governed. They have the actual full thing, baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
So uh, thanks for bringing that up. We actually know from extra biblical material that the earliest way that they did this was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Time. And that when they used the thing, they were using the shorthand version. There you go. Right. Notice that Chris did not respond to what I said. Right? I said that Peter only baptized using only the, the, the Son alone. Let me repeat. It says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, everyone, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. So what we find here is that Peter was only baptizing in the name of Jesus. Hold on a minute. But that was a commandment from Jesus. That was a commandment. If there was a commandment that Jesus said that you must baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, why did Peter disobey this direct order? You still have not responded to this. I asked that question about three times and I got no response. So please respond to that. Why did not Peter baptize using this formula? That's part number one. Part number two, I pointed to you in a Grolia Encyclopedia, most, in a Grolia Encyclopedia, it states that Matthew 28 verse 19 is the Grolia Encyclopedia. Read up, find it for yourself, right? The Grolli Encyclopedia says that Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 is an interpolation, is an interpolated verse. Number three, right? Does Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, does it say that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are three in one? You still have not shown me where it says it does. Please get the verse out and show me where it says that Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 says they are three in one. Also, right? Also, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 contradicts Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 because Jesus said, I was only sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You pointed to the verse where Jesus said that you should go out into all the nations. So therefore, two verses are in conflict. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 contradicts Matthew chapter 28 verse... Sorry, time. All right, so again, he keeps saying, look, Peter said it like this. He said, you do it in the name of Jesus. He never mentioned Father, Son, Holy Spirit, therefore he didn't do it that way. No, it's just doing shorthand. Every, we have good evidence to believe that when they were writing this, they used a the shorthand form, because otherwise it's a lot more ink and a lot more room on the paper you have to use. So they were writing in papyri. Papyri is a precious material and expensive. And how do we know that they did baptize in the actual formula, the baptismal formula, the 2819? The Didache. The Didache is one of the earliest extra biblical documents we have that explains how the early church was instructed to baptize. So, thank you very much for pointing out how the earliest manuscript evidence points in my favor and not yours. Anyway, so so now we go back to, uh, where was it now? Where did you jump? So, you, what was, the, what was your next point? What was your next point? Um, you should, Where's 2819? You did that one, then... Sorry, but I can't remember what your point was. No, uh, it's your time. You're not going to tell me what you said? It's your time. Okay. Oh, yeah, it says where they're like... Uh, oh, that's again, explicit word fallacy. Explicit word fallacy is a fallacy, my friend. Likewise, again, if you want me to play those games, I challenge you to find me a verse in the Quran that says Muhammad was sinless. The doctrine of Ishma is a doctrine of which is not supported by the Quran or Hadith, but you believe it anyway. Show me a single verse in the Quran that says it. Surah 48, Ayah 2 makes it clear that Muhammad had sinned because his past, present and future sins will be forgiven. But again, you won't ever address that. You have already lost this debate because you've already conceded that Jesus is God according to the New Testament. You don't have anything else to fall back on. I don't need to show a trinity in an explicit thing. The, the 2819 baptismal formula is for fun, to be honest with you. I've already used uh, John chapter 20 verse 28 to prove it to you, which you couldn't deal with. You ended up saying that Thomas was blasphemy. Which, by the way, Thomas might have actually been a genuine disciple of Islam. So you may have just made a pretty bad comment about some of the disciples of Islam. Mm. But again, I guess I'll leave that with you and Allah to deal with it. My point is that you have conceded that indeed Jesus is called God in the New Testament. Time? Right. Okay. So, Chris. Hello. Hello. So, that sounded like a brutal attack. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. I'll, 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 I'll I will listen now and speak to you later. Okay. Yeah, right. It seems that Chris has made a very poor argument. What I said was very specific. I pointed out that Peter only baptized in the name of the Father alone. Why did not Peter baptize in this free fold formula? He did not respond to that. Let's go to other verses. Let's go to other verses where it says that the disciples only baptized in the name of Jesus. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 27, 
as many of you were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 also Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 and whatever you do in a word of deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ which necessarily would include baptism why has why are the disciples completely disobeying Jesus if this was a commandment if this was a commandment a necessary commandment of the disciples that they have to baptize using this formula why do you find the disciples as a whole disobeying this order you still haven't responded to that I pointed to you that Peter did not baptize in this formula you still haven't come back with an answer so please respond to the point please I pointed to you to you and other verses where the disciples only baptized in the name of Jesus that's number one. Number two, Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 says, I was not sent except unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Matthew chapter 27 verse, uh, uh, Matthew 15 verse 24 contradicts Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Because if it says that go out into all the nations and preach using this formula, why did Jesus say only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? In John chapter 10 verse 5, Jesus said, Do not go in unto the way of the Gentiles. Rather go in unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, hold on, my last point. So Matthew chapter 10 verse 5, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, and Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 all contradict each other. Please explain to me this necessary contradiction between the verses. Your time. Okay, this is really simple. Again, I have actually given you an answer. First of all, the short form, which is just in the name of Christ and not Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is there because otherwise, you have to, every time you write that, which has been a lot, as you demonstrated by quoting it in multiple places, you would have to keep writing this. So to save space, they did not do that. They just wrote in the name of Christ. In other words, in the name of what Christ taught. What did he teach, Father, Son, Holy Spirit? How do we know the earliest disciples did this? Because the Didache says so. The baptismal formula is there. So the manuscript evidence favors my, uh, my argument, not yours, it goes against you. Then you were saying, ah, Jesus was only sent to the house of Israel. Yes, his ministry was the house of Israel. And then after his resurrection, it was to all mankind. <laughs> but again, for some reason, you seem to be thinking that time is like, not, doesn't pass at all in the scriptures. It's just one solid block of time. If I took this same approach with the Quran, it'd be hilarious. Chapter Surah Al-Maidah, Ayah 32. Anyone who kills a life is like he's killed the lives of all mankind. That's a direct contradiction of Surah Tauba, Ayah 29, where it says, fight those who do not believe uh, in Allah or the, or the last day. But of course, I'm sensible enough to know it's not a contradiction, because one thing was for one time, and one thing was for another time. This is basic level stuff. And yet you hope that your audience doesn't know this. You hope that your audience thinks that time doesn't progress in the Gospels, because most of them haven't read them. And I find that sad. It is clear. Acts 1.8, Jesus says in his own words that he commands us all to go out to every nation. Every nation, my friend, is not just the Jews. So evidently, there are two places at minimum where he says go out. Matthew 28.19 and Acts 1.8. But the other verses where he says he's only come to the house of Israel is because that's who his missionary work was primarily to in the three years that he was alive. But after his resurrection, he told everyone to go out to all nations. Which, interestingly enough, the early Islamic tradition actually opposed. So, hey. But anyway, I think that's enough to, to bury this. I'm happy okay. to, well, to wrap I'm going to respond. Yeah, I will wrap yeah, up. Wrap I'll respond. Up right. we'll okay, fine. No, actually, you do your closing argument and then I will... No, you do your... No. your turn. Really? Oh, yeah, then, okay. why not? This is weird. I'm supposed to start and... All right, okay, fine. I don't mind. Um, right, my, my end argument is this, basically. You were trying to convince a Christian brother that Jesus is not God in the New Testament. I showed you verses directly where he is called God by other people and he acknowledges it. I showed you a verse where he says that you can worship him, where you can pray uh, to him in his name and he will answer his prayers, where he knows all things and he is speaking plainly and not figuratively. He's speaking plainly, he knows all things, that means he's omniscient, therefore he has an attribute of God. These are clear defining points of God and also the brother point of the whole first and last thing, right? Jesus is called first and the last, that is a divine title, Revelation 1.8, Revelation 22.13, that is also in your Quran, which you affirm as an attribute of Allah. So even in, according to your own beliefs, you would believe that Jesus is called God in the New Testament. So rather than play this game, just be honest and say you think the New Testament is corrupt, because we all know that's where the end goal is. We all know that's where you're going to go. 
but you're doing this tricky thing because you're hoping that people don't know. But when someone calls it out, you're going to have to ultimately go, oh, jump to us, jump to somewhere else. Oh, it's all been corrupted because that's the Dallas script. And I find that sad because in this debate, you have indeed conceded and gone to many other points, but you have conceded that Jesus is God according to the New Testament. Thank you very much for the debate. Okay, well, I'm going to finish my closing argument, yeah? Right, okay. So I feel that Chris did not respond to majority of the points I raised. I pointed out in the Greek, um, in John 1.1 1, 1 in Greek, where it says, in ech in halogos, ke logos on prostontheon, where it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So it shows that Jesus, which was, the ex according to the Bible, the expression of God, ke logos on prostontheon, he is the expression of God. He was with God. Shows shows that there was an entity with the Father. I'm going from a Greek lexical meaning. Ke logos on prostontheon means that the word was with God, which shows that there was a separation. There was a separation in the beginning, which demonstrates which demonstrates that there were two gods in the beginning. Yes, I do concede at the end of the verse, it does say, and the word was God. And I use the word tontheos, which lacks the definite article. I showed you in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, the same word in the Septuagint says what? Tontheos when it came to Moses. I shall make you a tontheos unto Pharaoh. I shall make you a God unto Pharaoh. So we can see... What do we see here? We see a, a deliberate mistranslation. We see a deliberate mistranslation in the translation itself. Now, you pointed out to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, right? I've pointed to you that according to the Grolier Encyclopedia, it says that Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 is an interpolated verse. I would, I would kindly request for you to look into this. And the reason why I'm showing that is because Peter did not baptize using this formula. Peter only baptized using the Father, the, uh, the, the, the Son alone, right? Also, I pointed out in Galatians chapter 3 that the disciples also baptized using Jesus alone and not in this threefold formula. And the last two points I'd like to make and then we can close is that Although Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 does say go out into all the nations and preach the gospel it says this I am not in dispute of that but then it does contradict Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 where Jesus says I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel Chris's response was oh well you know what in, in initially his his ministry was to the children of Israel but later on his ministry was to the wider world. But hey, that still contradicts Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. Because in Matthew chapter 10 verse 5, it says what? Do not go in unto the way of the Gentiles. Don't go there. So we got a specific commandment of Jesus that you should not go to the Gentiles. And Matthew 15 verse 24 says, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So I was explaining to Chris that Matthew chapter 24 verse 19, Matthew chapter 24 verse 19 contradicts Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Sorry, uh, Matthew, cha Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 contradicts Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 and it also contradicts John chapter 10 verse 5. So you still have not harmonized what you've done. You've just created more conflict. Well, thank you very much. God bless you for that. And with that, um, that was my finishing statement. And then, yeah, we're going to part ways. Thank you. Thank you for the debate. You're welcome. Is that an old plan to you? And I'll tell you something new about your religion. We had seen that Jesus is not God in the New Testament. I showed him verses that clearly call Jesus God in the New Testament. And he couldn't really deal with any of that. So we just jumped to lots of different issues. I didn't present the case, did I? Why come not to me?
when <laughs> we were having a discussion about David, you escorting Matthew 5. David, why are you such a desperate Why are you such a desperate Chill out. Hamza, here's what I'll say to you. Why are you so desperate? I would love to know so what makes we put you lack this basic, basic comprehension <laughs> to understand what that the Bible calls the French on the life of the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y